You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday, 19th of January, 2015. Evening Standard, a criminal hardcore freed onto London streets, are committing thousands of crimes. Is the PM growing a set? Muslim leaders told they have really have a problem after complaining about Minister's letter demanding they root out extremism. Police chiefs concede it would be naive to say there is not a child's sexual exploitation problem in Windsor and Maidenhead. Professional boxer engaged in sexual activity with 14-year-old on day he proposed to fiancé. Police label Burton on Staffordshire as child sex exploitation hotspot. Dutch dimmies humiliate teacher by forcing him to apologise to every Muslim student in the school for putting up a Charlie Hebdo poster. Kenya, UK launches programme to protect children in Kenya. Saudi Arabia publicly beheads woman in holy Mecca. Thought for the day, a positive message of hope for this country. And finally, two for one day Monday. UK News. Evening Standard. Criminal hardcore freed onto London streets are committing thousands of crimes. New official statistics, compiled from an analysis in eight London boroughs, showed 418 criminals freed into the community have carried out about 20,000 offences between them, an average of around 48 each. The most prolific criminals have an even worse record. Eight register more than 150 offences apiece. Another 21 have been responsible for at least 100 each. Nearly half of the 418 have committed at least one serious offence, such as robbery, wounding or other violent crime. The figures obtained from the Deputy Mayor for Policing, Stephen Greenhalgh, will fuel debate about the failure of rehabilitation policies and the impact on law-abiding Londoners and the public purse. They follow separate Ministry of Justice statistics obtained by the Standard in March, which showed that 554 criminals, each with at least 50 previous convictions, had reoffended after being freed during one 12-month period. City Hall's new figures suggest that the problem remains severe. Across London, some 1,800 prolific offenders are registered on the system known as Integrated Offender Management, which aims to ensure probation staff and police take faster action if they breach the terms of conditions imposed after their release. World at eight. Another point avoided by the authorities is that the ethnicity of these free criminals and the time they've spent in the UK. This country is a haven for the wicked, lazy and greedy of other countries who don't want them, but insist that we take them in under the name of humanitarian aid and diversity. Absolute rubbish. Is the PM growing a set? Muslim leaders told they really have a problem after complaining about Minister's letter demanding they root out extremism. David Cameron today warned Muslim leaders that they had a problem if they objected to being asked to do more to tackle Islamist extremism. The Prime Minister said letters sent to mosques by Eric Pickles were reasonable, sensible and moderate, and ministers were absolutely right to insist everybody had a responsibility to fight radicalisation. It came after the Muslim Council of Britain accused the government of ratcheting up tensions and adopting the language of the far right. More than 1,100 imams and Islamic leaders have been sent a government letter urging them to show men of hate that they have no place in Britain's mosques or any place of worship. In the letter, Community Secretary Eric Pickles and Minister Lord Ahmed write, We must show our young people who may be targeted that extremists have nothing to offer them. We must show them that there are other ways to express disagreement, that their right to do so is dependent on the very freedoms that extremists seek to destroy. The letter ends, We welcome your thoughts, ideas and initiatives on how to ensure that Islam's true message of peace triumphs over those who seek to divide our communities. The letter was sent by Community Secretary Eric Pickles and Minister Lord Tariq Ahmed of Wimbledon. Muslim commentator Mohammed Ansar went further, tweeting, Ridiculous and unhelpful intervention from the Community Secretary Eric Pickles this morning by asking all Muslims to prove themselves. Government ministers, rather than ratcheting up tensions and fueling the fifth column narrative, should be looking to unite communities. But asked about the criticisms this morning, Mr Cameron insisted the letter was reasonable, sensible and moderate and suggests that anyone opposing it really has a problem. 
Well, to date, at last, Camorran has developed some balls. It doesn't take much to offend even your average so-called peaceful Muslim, which explains why we in the UK are now living on the edge of the abyss, with a foreign influence growing every day. Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon, how gross. The letter should have read, no meetings over four people in public or outside mosques, halal food banned in English supermarkets, all foreign children to have to speak English before they enter our schools, and many more lovelies. Like a jizzy tax on all Muslims using the NHS and any form of benefits. Now that would cause just a whimper, wouldn't it? Police chiefs concede it would be naive to say there is not a child exploitation problem in Windsor and Maidenhead. Thames Valley Police this week revealed since autumn 2013 the force has got involved in 38 incidents to protect young people in the borough believed to be at risk of CSE. It added currently 13 young people are actively being worked with. Of the 38 incidents, 37 involved girls and all 38 were aged between 12 and 18. Since the launch of CSE tackling programme in the Windsor and Maidenhead policing area in autumn 2013, three abduction notices have been slapped on people suspected of grooming teenagers and there have been two arrests on suspicion of CSE, both unrelated to the abduction notices. Superintendent Kate Ford, Area Commander for Windsor and Maidenhead, said It would be very naive to say just as we lived in an affluent area there isn't a problem. We don't have a problem on the scale of some areas. We have young people that we believe are being exploited and we are working closely with partners to make sure that doesn't escalate. Windsor-based Inspector Emily Roberts, who is taking the lead on tackling CSE in the borough, revealed as part of a large-scale training and education operation with hotels and bed and breakfast last year, one hotel in the Royal Borough was given comprehensive training in licensing laws in September. World to date. No, true that that area doesn't have the problems of Rotherham or Rochdale, but that's because the Muslim migrants went north at first, but now are down south. Oxford and Kent are now becoming trouble spots because of the increase in Muslim migrants to those areas. It's a simple case of numbers and wait and see. Professional boxer engaged in sexual activity with 14-year-old on day he proposed to to fiancé. A professional boxer who groomed a 14-year-old girl for sex has been sent to prison. Dangerous Atif Mushtaq, described as a predatory paedophile, lured the schoolgirl into his car and started a relationship with her. The 27-year-old offered the teen gifts, even promising to take her away to a hotel for her 15th birthday. Police said he had even made the girl perform sex acts on him the day he proposed to his fiancé. Light welterweight Mushtaq pleaded guilty to two counts of sexual activity with a child and was sentenced to four years and eight months behind bars. Speaking after the hearing, Detective Sergeant Mark Whelan from the Public Prosecution Unit said Mushtaq was a dangerous and manipulative offender. He said he was clearly of a predatory nature because he approached the victim at the side of the street. He was manipulative because he groomed her into sexual activity. Mushtaq is a dangerous individual. The grooming started when the defendant, who was engaged to be married and has a young child, pulled over in Nelson and stopped the teenager. World at eight. I bet he still will be treated better than the footballer rapist because he was white and has really come under the gun. This guy will walk away, still boxing, pleading his colour or religion, and do exactly the same thing again. Please label Burton in Staffordshire a sex exploitation hotspot. Burton has been labelled as a hotspot for child sexual exploitation by senior police officials. The claim was made after John Drake, acting assistant chief constable for Staffordshire Police, revealed the town was one of the worst hit areas by predators sharing images of child sex abuse online. Around 200 people are taking part in the practice across the country at any one time, he said. It comes only months after six men were jailed after being found guilty of committing child exploitation offences with a Burton victim aged just 13. Now police chiefs and other agencies are working together in a bid to catch the people responsible and help the victims. Assistant Chief Constable Drake said, Although there are hot spots in Stoke-on-Trent and Burton, there are children affected in every district in Staffordshire. My message is, if you're sitting there doing this, you're on borrowed time. Police say offenders that are operating in gangs are more likely to be Asian males, but lone predators are the full mix of society. Most victims are white British girls aged 13 to 15. In Staffordshire alone, 43 youngsters are currently known to be at risk of child sexual exploitation. World at eight. The thing that escapes the media and authorities is that when Muslim grooming takes place, it does so with very underage girls, 10 or 11 in many cases. When a white guy is head up either for rape or historic abuse, the victims are usually over 16. 
not vulnerable, but cashing in. There is a huge difference in the cultural approach of these nasty crimes, and it should be noted. European news. Dutch dimmies humiliate teacher by forcing him to apologise to every Muslim student in the school for putting up a Charlie Hebdo poster. The administration of the Dutch high school Kenema College in Heimskirk has banned a Charlie Hebdo poster of a Muslim man kissing a cartoonist that was put on the wall by one of its teachers. This was done after Muslim students complained about the poster. 10 News. They responded very emotionally to the poster and considered it offensive to Muslims. We're talking about children aged between 12 and 15 who are attending vocational training and don't understand the French text L'amour plus fort que la haine, love is stronger than hate. But not all parents are pleased with the measures taken by the school's management and have complained to the school. After what happened in Paris, this is the world turned upside down. A teacher had to go to all the classrooms to apologise because students of Moroccan and Turkish descent complain about a magazine that's always put the freedom of speech centre stage, some mothers pointed out. School principal Lemstra, however, thinks that the decision to remove the poster was the right thing to do. The school board has sent the following letter of apology to all parents. Dear parents, to our regret, a teacher today put a poster on the wall that was offensive and does not match with our school's policy. After a number of Muslim students complained about the poster, the school's management immediately intervened and removed the poster. The teacher that put up the poster has been reprimanded. In addition, our team leader went to all classrooms to make clear that a grave mistake had been made by the teacher and that the school board wishes to apologise to everybody. The teacher expressed his deep regret and said that he did not intend to hurt anybody. All he wanted was to demonstrate his solidarity with victims of the Paris attacks. Kind regards, Marlene Lemstra, school principal, Kenemena College. World 8, absolutely sickening and grovelly. All Muslim immigrants in all countries in Europe should feel ashamed. They build the mosques, they give birth to these bastards, and they still expect to be considered nice people. Well, they ain't. And the sooner we all wake up to the fact, the less trouble we'll have in the future. The Dutch are cowards, but then they were during the war as well. World News. Kenya, UK launches programme to protect children in Kenya. Nairobi, the United Kingdom's National Crime Agency, NCA, in conjunction with the British High Commission, is launching a new initiative to combat the sexual exploitation and abuse of children in Kenya by travelling British child sexual offenders. The International Child Protection Certificate, ICPC, has been developed to target British nationals and residents who may be seeking to travel and work overseas in order to sexually abuse children. An ICPC can only be issued following checks made against police information and intelligence databases. It aims to provide reassurance that staff employed in schools and voluntary organisations do not have a UK criminal record that makes them unsuitable to work with children. The launch of the ICPC in Kenya represents the culmination of many months of close cooperation between the United Kingdom's National Crime Agency and Kenyan Partners, officials said. The certificate is already being used in 73 countries worldwide and has been officially launched in Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, Cambodia, Ukraine, Spain and Poland. The introduction of the ICPC in Kenya comes shortly after the conviction of UK national Simon Harris, a prolific child abuser who posed as the volunteer charity worker to groom and sexually exploit vulnerable street children in the town of Gilgil. British High Commissioner to Kenya, Dr Christian Turner, said they believe their responsibility to protect children from abuse does not stop at the borders of the UK. I applaud the pivotal role of the NCA in working with national and international law enforcement agencies to pursue British suspects, wherever they are located, to safeguard children and prosecute offenders. We must continue working together to ensure all our children are given the same chance to learn and grow in the safest environment possible, Turner said. Well, to date, sounds good, but then it would, as the perpetrators are supposedly all British, whatever that covers, I suppose the Africans who rape babies or the Arabs who enslave them are not counted in this particular lovified action. When are we going to vet all the migrants who come over here for criminal records when they want to work with babies, children, the sick and the elderly? Seems a rather one-way traffic to me. Saudi Arabia publicly beheads woman in Mecca. Authorities in Saudi Arabia have publicly beheaded a woman in Islam's holy city of Mecca, prompting further criticism of the country's human rights record. 
Lala bint Abdul Muttalab Basim, a Burmese woman who resided in Saudi Arabia, was executed by sword on Monday after being dragged through the streets and held down by four police officers. She was convicted of the sexual abuse and murder of her seven-year-old stepdaughter. A video showed how it took three blows to complete the execution while the woman screamed, I did not kill, I did not kill. It has now been removed by YouTube as part of its policy on shocking and disgusting content. There are two ways to behead people, according to Mohammed al Saidi, a human rights activist. One way is to inject the prisoner with painkillers to numb the pain, and the other is without the painkiller, he told the Middle East Eye. The Saudi Ministry of the Interior said in a statement that it believed the sentence was warranted due to the severity of the crime. The beheading is part of an alarming trend which has seen the kingdom execute seven people in the first two weeks of this year. In Saudi Arabia, a number of crimes, including murder, rape, adultery and armed robbery, can carry a capital sentence. Beheading is considered one of the more humane punishments authorities can mete out, a firing squad and stoning or other methods open to judges. Well, to date, we will never know whether she did it or not. The fact the girl was a stepchild and Saudi probably affected this outcome. By the way, Mecca is not holy to me or anyone non-Muslim. Thought for the day. Positive message of hope for this country. Now, I know that positive messages are much better to listen to than negative ones, and that looking back, World of Date has usually followed the wake-up idiot's negative approach, which is not entirely my fault, as we in this country seem to either forget how we got to this spot in the first place, or simply go on making the same old mistakes. So it is with these in mind I've plucked a few national stories from the papers over the weekend and given them the nationalist slant or the Radio Britain slant if you're going to be picky, my slant. It is also well known that the more negative messages that go out, the more the man in the street will form his own rejection bias and go on to completely the other side of the coin that is intimated. Example, for many decades now, all nationalists, whether neo-Nazis, fascists, haters of all things not like themselves, anti-Semites or simply patriots, have been telling everyone about the dangers of immigration into this country. And what do various governments, public bodies and the entertainment industry, the media and the fashionable lovies do? Well, they ignored the warnings and indeed encouraged all forms of ghastly diversity, which lulled the man in the street into not thinking about it, or if he did, it was in a positive way, which meant they have all participated in bringing about what surely will come to pass in any overpopulated country, which has been, is and soon will be, overpopulated by vastly different cultures and ethnicities to the people already here. We are now being encouraged to feel sorry for the shiploads of migrants and the way they are fleeced by truly wicked people, but surely they are all capable of reading or watching. Although many of these countries these people flee from are in the dark ages, it doesn't prevent them, once they set foot in English soil, getting the money for mobile phones and cars. And that says a lot, doesn't it? I, for one, do not feel sorry for them. Pity is cheap, and pity in itself is also a form of ignorance. If you feel sorry for them, you are acknowledging that this problem is none of your business, and whilst feeling some sort of empathy, you're also feeling relief that you don't have to really think about it because they will not live on your doorstep or shop at your shops or put several more of their children into an already overcrowded state school. Wrong positive thinking. This is all our problem, because if we don't want this massive colonisation on a large scale for our children's children to sort out, something will have to be done by us and done now. It now appears that the latest ship heartlessly abandoned is on our doorstep, of course. Soon, our governments will have to clench their buttocks and make rules that safeguard not everyone else coming into this country, but the people already born, living and working here for many years. Labour's stitch-up of a private hospital is just typical of Labour, and it's well-worn and old-fashioned union and class-type thinking. The only good thing to come out of a Labour government was the old National Health Service, which incidentally my mother never made use of, even though hard-pressed to find doctors' bills. I never knew the NHS until my second marriage and after my third child. Even then, I had breaks of being privately insured, and believe me, there is a difference, which I appreciate. But nonetheless, the idea of a National Health Scheme was good, and certainly helped the needy in the beginning. 
Nowadays, it is being run down as an excuse to blame the white elderly patients, who, due to socialist mores and dysfunctional families, have no one to look after them during a recovery period and are taking up beds which could be used mainly for migrants and their ilk. The reason, whenever the news talks about the NHS, they always show white people waiting or in beds, they never show the Black Sea down in the waiting rooms in many areas. It would be a racial bias. Talk about the N-word and it should read knucklehead instead of nigger. And yes, I know I've used the literal licence as knucklehead starts with a K. The Reverend Al Sharpton, who despite my revulsion at Clang Hangings, should certainly have been killed off at birth, now says that the Oscar nominations are too white. Well, Rev, old son, that should tell you something to think about. They're all white because they're all good actors with good films. Even the best educated and most famous of your sons and daughters are usually drug-riddled and remnants by the time they're 40 or so bloody pushy and trashy it hurts the eyes. Get over it. Now, that is a positive message for whites in the UK and the US. One family charged with neglect for leaving a 12-year-old with friends whilst the entire country sympathised and grieved when a couple of minor doctors left all three of their very young children for a drunken dinner abroad and have been causing havoc ever since because someone came in and stole one of them. Talk about a difference in reporting. Ever wondered why the Portuguese police didn't really bother about it as the couple had turned down babysitting services for that night? Very odd, really, whilst the Johnsons are being pilloried by the nanny state plods who should be concentrating on not getting young white kids into care homes to be used and abused by the local Muslim communities, surely. A pensioner charged for putting anti-vandal paint on his wall because it damaged the vandal's cheap clothes. Another whammy in the I do not believe it pot. Vandals and yuck graffiti artists should be beaten severely in public in front of what they've done because usually it is absolute crap. It is usually racist, gang-based, ethnic-based and moron-based. I would have put bright blue permanent paint on as well every time so they went out and left their holes. Even their neighbours would know what they were. Useless idiots. And that's an insult to idiots. Oh boy, we are now paying disability to fat under fives. What utter madness. Well, that heralds the case for thousands of migrants and our own poor white trash to overfeed their kids so that they qualify for these extra payments. Whilst cutting down on council care and putting good care homes out of business, slashing care and payments generally across the board for the more mature amongst us, greedy idiots are thinking up ways to spend money that is not there on the stupids amongst us. In my day, a badly behaved child was just that. A swift smack and it usually went away. Of course, we didn't have the benefit of the nanny state or cheap foreign processed food, so bad behaviour, unless there was a real and obvious medical cause, was just that, bad behaviour. It didn't merit £80 a week for fully or higher functioning Asperger's to stay at home and paint, and schizos were then in mental hospitals where they should be looked after, not in the community, which now cannot even look after itself. The positive message for people who didn't fit into the norm of society, as it was then called, was that if genuine there was help, and the entire monetary system was different, as were the living conditions. Not as well decorated as now, when even what used to be classed as council houses now sport decking and umpteen cars in a paved driveway, but adequate for living. But Labour shut down the mental homes, whilst at the same time bringing over hordes of definitely mentally ill African and other criminals to swell its ranks. Nowadays it pays to be... Not disabled, which is an honourable and unfortunate thing in most cases, but gender confused, a bit loopy, completely off the wall, coloured or Muslim, because whilst you may not qualify for a brand new Muslim washing room or room for various wives, you might qualify for being a homicidal maniac. They're starting an LGBT Northwest school for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender beings of 13 years old in London. No doubt it will benefit immensely from donations and the government's diversity effort, as in North London it will be mainly black or Arab kids. This is another I simply do not believe at the moment. How the hell do you know, when you're 13, what you'll be sexually? Yet this is another British idiocy gone even madder. Of course, the lottery will function well here, as they did in the Taliban women's fishing classes, and they will do very much better than proper charities, which help white people of all ages and animals, because, of course, we or the animals do not need looking after, but the oddies clearly do.
Now, frankly, I do not care who does what, with what, to whom, as they're happy. Do not take money from me and do not push it down my throat. Because whilst I admit no one is normal, I like to think the vast majority of us are at least trying to be. Whoever heard of someone not getting a job in England because he was middle-aged, white, overqualified and could speak English? We all have, in the last couple of decades, heard this. And to cap it all, I turned on the ITV news yesterday and it was TV Nigeria and India, not a white face in sight, even for the sodding weather. And you think we nationalists are racist? Lastly, but not least, is the very odd sight of our Home Secretary sitting in a room of God knows what, holding a sign, Je suis juif. What's that mean? Is she Jewish? No. And why all the crap about anti-Semitism in England? Do Christians walk about with kill Jews on signs? Do we deface synagogues, boycott Jewish shops like Tesco, spit and make the Orthodox cut off their beards? Do we have Kristallnacht every weekend? No, we don't. And the only people who really hate the Jews are the Muslims. And true, there are enough of them over here now to make life for the average Judaic person rather uncomfortable. But then the Muslims would make life awful for us under Sharia as well. So don't really see any positive message with a bunch of MP and so-called elite sitting around wearing signs. Rather like the Third Reich and the stars, isn't it? Also along those lines, we have all forgotten the poor little Pakistani kids killed by Taliban terrorists. No signs for them. No je suis whatever. No, you are not Spartacus, and neither am I. But of course, who knows what might happen once people realise the positive message is just the other side of the negative ones. They reflect each other. And finally, two for one day Monday. Three women, two younger and one senior citizen, were sitting naked in a sauna. Suddenly, there was a beeping sound. One of the young women pressed her forearm. And the beep stopped. The other looked at her questioningly. That was my pager, she said. I have a microchip under the skin of my arm. A few minutes later, a phone rang. The second young woman lifted her palm to her ear. When she finished, she explained, That was my mobile phone. I have a microchip in my hand. The older woman felt very low-tech. Not to be outdone, she decided she had to do something just as impressive. She stepped out of the sauna and went to the bathroom. She returned with the piece of toilet paper hanging from her rear end. The others raised their eyebrows and stared at her. The old woman finally said, Well, would you look at that? I'm getting a fax. And father is shocked when he discovers this horrifying letter from his son. It's an American one, by the way. A father passing by his son's bedroom was astonished to see the bed was nicely made and everything was picked up. Then he saw an envelope popped on, propped up prominently on the pillow. It was addressed, Dad. With the worst premonition, he opened the envelope and read the letter with trembling hands. Dear Dad, it's with great regret and sorrow that I'm writing you. I had to elope with my new girlfriend because I wanted to avoid a scene with Mum and you. I've been finding real passion with Stacy, and she is so nice, but I knew you would not approve of her because of her piercings, tattoos, tight motorcycle clothes, and because she is so much older than I am. But it's not only the passion, Dad. She's pregnant. Stacy said that we will be very happy. She owns a trailer in the woods and has a stack of firewood for the whole winter. We share a dream of having many more children. Stacy has opened my eyes to the fact that marijuana doesn't really hurt anyone. We'll be growing it for ourselves and trading it with the other people in the commune for all the cocaine and ecstasy we want. In the meantime, we'll pray that science will find a cure for AIDS so Stacy can get better. She sure deserves it. Don't worry, Dad, I'm 15 and I know how to take care of myself. Some day I'm sure we'll be back to visit so you can get to know your many grandchildren. Love your son, Joshua. P.S. Dad, none of the above is true. I'm over at Jason's house. I just wanted to remind you that there are worse things in life than the school report that's on the kitchen table. Call when it's safe for me to come home. Now that young man has a brain and a sense of humour. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>